Michael's story. Hello, is there an introduction board for this website? My name is Michael. I've been reading this website for three days. I'm shocked to see everything I've experienced written in such a perfectly stated way. Never before have I seen a blog or media outlet so perfectly written. The writer is surely a genius. I'm amazed and relieved to see so many responses. It means I'm not alone. I'm 32 years old and have never been married. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm not sure which anymore at this point, I have no kids. I'm single and alone and not dating anyone. I live in Los Angeles. My income was $120,000. Net earnings after creative deductions and business taxes in 2011. Income is projected to be $170,000 net earnings after business taxes in 2012. I'm exactly the kind of independent man women claim they want. I drive a luxury car with an amazing apartment in Los Angeles, directly on the beach. It's quite a panty moistener and costs me 6000 per month. I work from home because an office would cost at least another $2,000 per month. I keep in great shape. Gym, three to four times a week, plus running, plus organic diet. I spend $700 to $900 a month on organic foods and supplements. I was raised in a Christian, seventh heaven, old TV show type household. We always went to church. Strong, hard-working father figure was always present for me and my siblings. I went to private school, university, law school, and then started my own practice at 28 years old. My parents met and married in college. They've been married for 39 years, and it hurts me to the core to be 32 and unmarried, alone, without a loving wife. I feel the pain from it every single day. It's like a sharp, invisible dagger constantly stabbing at me. But perhaps I'm part of the problem listed in the graph above. Let me explain why. I went to the same college my parents met and married at. I was hoping to meet, marry, and settle down. Instead, I was met with hundreds young college-aged women who were not interested in marriage. They were, however, interested in 1. Partying 2. Having sex College was a 24-7 fuckfest. At first, I was able to begrudgingly socialize in this element. What do I mean by this element within this context? College. Extreme social promiscuity. Cheating, drama, drugs and parties. I was an observer, but never a direct participant, because my heart would not let me. This eventually caused me to stick out as a third-wheel observer on campus, someone who was always not mixing or participating. As a result, I never really enjoyed the benefits. I rarely dated. Instead, I was sneered at. Cute girls flicked their fingers at me. I was used by women as a person to tell their problems to. I was passed over. I was seen as weak, lame, and boring. I was ignored in the hallways, library, classes, by these women. And it didn't help that I was cash-strapped, broke, working a minimum wage job and eating ramen noodles. The vast majority of these young hot girls vigorously pursued college life sex like you would not believe. They had sex with a large variety of guys, what I personally call lily padding. These girls did anything and anyone in the name of fun. Fun is parties. Fun is sex with new people. Fun is drugs. Fun is raves. Fun is fret party. It hurt me to watch these girls go out of their way to pursue and spread their legs for complete losers. Complete 
losers. I'm talking, hi, I work in a carnival part-time. I'm covered in tattoos. I have no job. I failed my minimum wage drug tests. And I'm in a band. These guys were losers. Some did not even go to college. They would hop a bus, stay with friends, and get laid that night. Many nights I could not sleep because of the girls getting fucked hard. One, two, three to four dorms down. The dorms were old military barracks from the 1940s with vents through the ceilings. It was egregiously loud. All the time, I remember how much it hurt to be rejected by one girl in particular. I had my open, hopeless romantic heart set on. We had a lot in common. I pursued her like a complete gentleman and was eventually turned down. The same weekend, after getting turned down, I got to hear her getting fucked hard and loud in the room next door. The guy who lived there was a super scraggly, unattractive, heavy drug user, covered in tattoos, majoring in music studies. This girl was young, hot, thin, and beautiful in her physical prime. I never said anything, but I felt so hurt. She turned me down for casual sex with a guy like that. This guy was very open about his exploits with her and told me not to worry because practically every guy knew he fucked her. As the years passed, the same thing happened again and again and again and again in various ways with all kinds of unrelated girls. What I mean is, I was looking for an LTR, long-term relationship, leading to marriage. I would meet, trade numbers, and talk, and feel a girl was a good person. Then, she would do other guys. Or, I would find out things like this. When this kind of thing happened to me over and over all through my life, it hurts me and makes me doubt senses. What's wrong? What's wrong with me that my heart is telling me she's a good person when she is clearly not? As time went on, I was labeled husband material by the girls on my campus. This phrase continued to plague me into my late twenties. This label resulted in zero dates all through college. I wasn't down with it. I wasn't participating, etc. Sex, drugs, parties, you name it. My heart wasn't into it. So, I wasn't entitled to any of the benefits, having sex with young attractive girls in their prime. However, party guys, flash-in-a-pan athletes, loser guys in bands, wannabe DJs, and self-professed club promoters were always getting these girls at their youngest, hottest, physical prime. Basically, the more of a loser the guy was, the more these women would have sex with them. Hot sorority girls flocked to football players like a butterflies on a beast. College athletes did not even try to get laid. One night, I had had enough. I confronted a room of 8 to 10 gorgeous white girls. These girls were 18 to 24 years old. I asked them if they planned to get married. All seemed to say more or less yes. I asked what their future husband would think of their behavior. I was immediately met with hostility. I was told the future husband would never know and it's none of his business. The girls said they knew exactly what they were doing and were planning to have their fun. Fun is partying. Fun is sex. Fun is going on spring break. And what settled down later. I asked, when are you planning to settle down? They said, eh, depends. And probably around 27, 28, or maybe sooner. Depends. I really put the girls on the spot. During our exchange, they saw I was upset. They told me I should be happy because nice guys finish first in the end. I told them you cannot have your cake and eat it too. Then, 
I was told by Kayleen, a young, thin, super sexy blonde with all the right curves in all the right places, who by the way refused to date me even though we were friends and according to her roommate had sex with almost 30 guys in one semester, told me, Michael, let me tell you something. Not only am I going to have my cake and eat it too, I'm going to have it with ice cream and sprinkles. All the girls laughed and smiled in agreement. I thought things would change after college. They didn't. Now at 32 and successful, these women are hitting me up. In my mind, these are the same women who rejected me. I'm not interested. The Bible says something to the effect of, don't forsake the wife of your youth, or something like, remember your young wife, something like that. How am I supposed to remember something I've never had? I have no history with these women. Ticking ovaries are scandalous. They will lie and say anything to get what they want, which is babies and a loving husband to pay their bills. Yet, these women did not even give a few good years of their youth. As a man, I'm very visual. God made me this way. I cannot help finding a physically beautiful woman attractive. Why did these women not at least give me a few years of their youth so I would have to fall in love with them and permanently burn their image in my mind's eye? I need something to remember when we are 50 and married. Yet, she spent her 20s parceling herself out to guys who gave her nothing and offers nothing to the guy who gives her everything. I'm expected to commit hard-earned resources to raising children with what is ultimately a suspect woman whose history I know nothing about. A 30-plus-year-old woman, unmarried, has a very high chance of having a questionable past and baggage. I believe the more men a woman has been with, the less likely she is to be emotionally committed each subsequent time. When you have handed out little pieces of your heart over years to dozens of different men, what is left for the husband you proclaim to truly love? What value do words like I love you mean when she has stared into the eyes of 10 to 100 plus different men and said the same thing? At 30 plus, Women's physical appearance has nowhere to go but down. Is this what women mean by saving the best for last? Marrying a 30-plus-year-old man? How can women spend trillions of dollars a year on beauty products, yet, at the same time, claim a woman's age shouldn't be important to a man? And what about children? Did they ever think their husbands might want to have children? What's more likely to naturally produce a quicker pregnancy and healthy offspring? A fertile 24-year-old in her physical prime or a 35-year-old aging womb? What if I wanted multiple children? A 30-plus-year-old woman can easily before infertility after her first pregnancy. As a result of everything I've seen and experienced in my life, I would like to make an announcement to all the desperate 30 plus year old women out there. I would rather suffocate and die than spend my hard earned income, love, trust, and substance on you. You're an entitled, aging feminist, jaded, baggage laden, and brainwashed. And if I cannot marry a woman in her 20s, I refuse to ever get married. Given my high income, this should not be a problem. However, I'm concerned at some point I will have to start looking overseas. Ukraine, Russia, Eastern Europe, etc. I'm not going to marry one of those 30-plus-year-old aging entitled females who clearly have an agenda of their own. I intend to get married once. Marriage is meant to be forever. 
I will not be a starter husband for one of these used-up women. I can't tell you the number of men I've known who married late and were rewarded by losing everything they spent their lives building. The way I see it, I've been given the following choices. 1. Marry a 30-plus-year-old woman. 2. Marry a woman in her 20s. 3. Be single and enjoy my money.